Hey guys, so this is a really cool example of a beautiful driveway leading down to the ocean. This is why I love the moonlighting effect and I don't know how well you're going to be able to see it in this video, but um, we've got about three or four lights up above in the tree shining down. And if you can see, this is what's cool is we kind of light the driveway and create these cool shadowing patterns um, that make it look like we have a full moon. Hey guys, it's Cal from The Lighting Doctor here. I hope you guys enjoy this video with some more great landscape lighting tips. To learn more about landscape lighting, go and check out our website at lightingdoctor.ca or if you want to see what a real quality landscape light should look like, go and check out our Try It Before You Buy It offer where you can get a premium quality fixture at a discounted rate with your very own battery pack so you can go and test out how that light's going to look and feel what a real premium quality light should look like. So go and check us out at lightingdoctor.ca or go watch more videos on YouTube just by searching for The Lighting Doctor. Okay, so uh, here we are on our project at Salt Spring. So um, the first thing I've done, like I always say, is I've just kind of gone and I've laid out all my lights because I want to make sure I have the appropriate amount of lights. And then from there, I can calculate how many watts I need and make sure I've got my proper um, transformer size and everything. And although I've already kind of done those calculations first, it's always a good idea just to double check. Um, from there, as you can see, I've just laid out all my wire on the ground. I'm running everything from my last light way over there um, and off to my next light. Again, that way I know how much wire I need. I kind of know my running path. And a general rule of thumb too is you always just want to make your life as simple as possible um, with LED. For this one, we even have like, um, we probably got about 350 feet of cable going out. Uh, this is a huge acreage, it's about seven acres. I'll give you guys a idea of that later. Um, but even with that and the amount of lights and everything, voltage drop is just not something I'm really concerned about. With this one, again, because we're using a good quality light, um, we're using large enough wire, we're not trying to save dollars using a smaller wire, which I'd always recommend go with at least 12 to low voltage uh, direct burial wire, or um, it's just, it's the easiest to work with, and you go with something smaller, you might save a couple bucks, but then you're really limiting the capacity of, of what you can add on. So that's pretty much it. And then um, we're doing a lot of uh, up lighting and down lighting on this, on this project, and um, this is kind of like our staple fixture that we use for a lot of our jobs, the RS um, up light. Uh, the reason I like it for so many reasons um, and why it works good for this is um, it comes with a really durable ground stake, which you don't always find with a lot of the lights and stuff you find on Amazon and Home Depot. It's a pretty cheap one and it breaks real easy. These stakes won't break. The light is, uh, is going to get hit by a tractor, might get knocked out of the threads, but these will not break and you can usually just screw them back in. So I like that. I like to have a, a 10 foot lead wire. So this is great when we're mounting them in trees and stuff because um, it just it gives me a lot of room to play around. If I come back at night and I want to move it, I can move it you know, within 10 feet either way and I don't have to remake connections. So I, I love that. Um, the wire is really easy to work with, cheaper models. Um, I know because sometimes we use different lights for different things. It's just, it's not as easy to work with. All this stuff adds up, which makes a, a quality light. If something's really cheap, there's generally a reason for that. So um, the other reason I like it is if you've had a chance to work with it or have tried or try it before you buy it light, you'll know um, this is an aluminum fixture, but this does not feel like most aluminum fixtures that you find on Amazon and Home Depot. Um, get our try before you buy it light. You can see how durable this thing is. Um, it's literally bulletproof. I've been installing these in trees before and I've dropped these from 25 feet and this thing does not break. Um, so uh, a really good light. And then the other reason I like it, especially for a lot of do-it-yourselfers, and I get flack from, uh, from professional lighting designers all the time saying, oh, integrated, integrated, integrated is the way to go. I, personally, I still like this. I like getting a good quality fixture and I like getting a good quality bulb. Again, you get um, you get some of the cheaper stuff you find online and you're gonna have problems with the bulb. They just don't last as long. They draw more power than they say. So that's where people run into voltage drops. And I get that email, uh, I don't know how many times a week. Hey, I bought this system. I won't say the name uh, from big box store and I hooked up all my lights. I've got 20 lights and they just, they won't come on. And it's because um, the lights are drawing a lot more power than the box actually says. And that's just based on efficiency and quality and all that kind of stuff. And they can't get their system to go. So, I mean, if you're doing a very small system, that's fine. But if you're getting upwards of 15, 20 lights plus, 
and you're still going with some of those cheaper models, there's a good chance you're gonna have some problems. Um, not so much with this. Um, the other reason I like it is the components are really easy. I'll talk about some troubleshooting stuff uh, later that uh, really allows you to play around and troubleshoot with this. And the other thing I like too is on this property, so we've got some trees that are, I, I don't know, I'm looking at them here, I say they're 80 to 100 feet high. So I wanna be able to put something in that's bright enough. And I like the ability that if I put something in and it's either too bright or not bright enough, I can just go and I can switch out a bulb. I don't have to change the fixture. I don't have to mess around with trying to change an LED board. I can just basically pop in a new bulb, um, try something a little bit brighter and see how that looks. So um, that's one of the reasons I really, really like these ones. Um, it just gives you a whole bunch of flexibility. I know a lot of people ask about beam spreads and, and intensities and all that kind of stuff. Well, this really allows you to play around with that because even as your landscape grows, as trees get bigger and stuff, you might want to upgrade how bright some of your bulbs are. Um, really good option. Again, uh, nice waterproof seal. That's another thing that just makes fixtures last. I mean, there's so many reasons. And, you know, we're on a on an island here that gets a lot of rain in the winter time. So I want to make sure we got something that's super waterproof. That's why we're using our waterproof connections and everything. But um, really wanted to give you a feel for why we're using uh, these lights on this project. And with so many, they're by far our most popular one. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll kind of keep going with the install here. Uh, we're just going to get our stakes um, in the ground. That is the one thing uh, I did another video, whether it's going to be part of this one or not, where we did some deck uh, lighting where your rubber mallet it really uh, is your best friend. It comes in all our kits um, for a reason because we use it a ton. And that's usually what I use when I'm securing, uh, especially here because we're on an island. This is rock. So I need to really be able I need to really be able to get that into the ground. There's no way I'm doing that if I just got to step on it. So you'll use this for so many different reasons. Um, when we're mounting some tree lights too, I'll show you some ways that we do that. Uh, but yeah, anyway, um, we'll move on with it. We'll screw our light in. We'll make our wiring connections. Um, a nice thing too, or, or little trick is, um, always try and keep the adjustment screw. Another reason I like this light, there's a little adjustment screw at the base. So you can come and you can just kind of uh, adjust it to go more upright or down if you want to um, and it's a really durable one it's not some cheap little screw thing that some of the lights again have online um, and then uh, the last thing I was gonna mention um, I totally forgot my train of thought but uh, but the adjustment oh yeah and that's what it was is a general rule of thumb whenever you're installing up lights you almost always want to have them more upright than you actually think I see so many people angle them at the objects um, and you typically get a lot better effect if you're angling it more upright um, than you think. So that's just a good general rule of thumb. But regardless, come back at night, make any adjustments, make sure you're getting the right effect. Even on a property this side, even with how many lights like these we've installed, I'm still coming back at night and I wanna make sure that I'm getting the effect that I look for um, with the design and everything that we've come up with. All right, guys, we're just finishing up here for the day. Um, the last two days on this property, we've literally uh, wired in about 75 lights, um, a lot of which were deck lights, uh, tree lights uh, for down lighting. Um, so all that stuff and, you know, something to think of whenever you're going to put any kind of down lighting or deck lighting, um, always a lot more time. It always takes two or three times longer than you think it's gonna be, um, and I'm pooped. We're gonna head uh, head out of here, go get some food uh, just before sun sets, and then, uh, like I always talk about in all the videos, we're gonna come back tonight, and we're gonna check everything out. Um, we've wired 75 lights, but we haven't buried a single thing yet, because I wanna come back tonight, and I wanna make sure that everything looks the way we want it to, whether we gotta increase the intensity of some bulbs, maybe we gotta move a couple lights by a foot or two here or there, um, all kinds of different things. We're gonna bring our, our King Innovation Instalite, um, which is our battery pack that comes with all our kits. I'm gonna have a light kind of on the ready so that if there's some areas that looks like maybe we missed or we could use some more light, then we're gonna light that up with the battery pack. We're gonna test it out. So tomorrow, if we need to, we can come add those lights on. Same thing with if we find that maybe there's some areas that we added a little bit too much light, we wanna take some away, um, then we can do that as well. Um, but I always leave everything exposed and I've already tested everything too. I know that everything works after I've 
wired everything together before I've buried anything. I've flicked on my transformer just so that I can make sure that every single light works because there's nothing worse than having to go back and dig up, um, you know, maybe some mistakes. And yes, we all make them, whether it's your first time or whether you've been doing it a lot once in a while. Uh, this might be the first project uh, that I haven't found a mistake yet, but it's still early. We're still only day two of day four. And tomorrow and probably the next day, uh, we're gonna be, we're gonna be just burying all our wire. We've got a couple guys to come help us um, in the grass and all those areas. So that's kind of the game plan. But you know, like I was talking about, test your lights, um, make sure everything looks right before you go and bury anything and come back at night to do that because that's easily the best way. So uh, signing off for tonight, uh, we'll see if we can get you guys some uh, late night videos, but it never quite turns out. Um, it's just very tough to get nighttime videos, but we'll do our best and we will uh, see you uh, tomorrow as we start burying everything up. Hey guys, so this is a really cool example of a beautiful driveway leading down to the ocean. This is why I love the moonlighting effect and I don't know how well you're going to be able to see it in this video, but um, we've got about three or four lights up above in the tree shining down. And if you can see, this is what's cool is we kind of light the driveway and create these cool shadowing patterns um, that make it look like we have a full moon and uh, by far my favorite feature and the thing we get commented on the most. Um, yes, it is a lot more work to get those lights up in the trees, but the effect is pretty phenomenal. So um, if you are up for it, I would definitely uh, recommend combination of some down lighting and some up lighting on the trees um, create some really cool effects hey guys so we'll take a quick look at the cottage here um, and, you know nighttime pictures never quite do it justice I think the only thing we're missing that I would add here is on the front porch we're gonna put a little down light there to highlight it but I think the uh, light in the two sides of the windows was nice create some symmetry we're just missing a little bit of a dark spot in the middle there and then as we kind of go around the side um, we only use six lights on this guy uh, which is nice but we just kind of highlight it again around the side here uh, just to give a little bit and as it gets darker um, you really be able to see the subtleties um, in the light a little bit higher up is just tough to see right now and then again by the entrance uh, we did the same thing over on on this side um, and I think everything turned out really nice um, very subtle lighting but just enough to make it pop so that you can kind of see it from a distance Hey guys, I really hope you enjoyed that video presentation with some great tips and tools on how to go and properly and effectively light up your landscape. And be sure if you want your own free consultation video, just send me an email at cal at lightingdoctor.ca with a few pictures of your property and we'll get back to you with some really cool ideas and ways to go and effectively light your property. And be sure to watch the videos after this one for more tips on how to install landscape lighting as well as how to light up your landscape the best way possible.